All right. So what we want to do is we want to talk about we want to talk about what makes for a well-designed website. We sort of started about that last time, started talking in that direction last time. We want to kind of come to some conclusions about that. And we also want to talk about how we can get to that point where we can develop a well-designed website. Because like a lot of things, this doesn't happen accidentally, you know. Um, there are enough poorly designed websites out there to show that developing a, a well-designed website takes work. It doesn't just happen accidentally. So if we can sort of review where we left off last time and maybe add a few things, what would you say characteristics of a well-defined, well-designed website is? Can you name some? All right, good color scheme. Good in what way? All right. One is that it is appropriate for the topic. What would another aspect of it being a good color scheme be? They work well together. All right. Um, and I guess the other thing I'm looking at when you say they work well together um, is that they're, they're legible. Um, so it, it, appropriate for topic, um, the colors um, work well together. And the overall, the site is legible. So no yellow font on an orange background, for example. Uh, those colors might look nice together, but they don't necessarily lend for a, uh, a readable site. Anything else? Any other characteristics? Yes? Um, like simplistic, like clear. Okay. Simplistic. I'm going to go with the second one that says clear. All right. So when we talk about the site being clear, what are some of the things that we want the site to be clear about? Or what are some of the different ways that we want the site to be clear? Yes? Clarity of content. Clarity of content. Okay. Does anyone want to elaborate on what that means? Okay. Um, that um, you don't have to hunt around. That, that you know, and, and a couple things come to mind. Did you want to elaborate on that? Okay. And so you have to have the, the purpose of the website or the initial mm -hmm. um, like, you know, content of the website to be clear from the get go. Okay. So um, clear as to the, the purpose of the site as soon as a person lands on the site. All right. So, in other words, you shouldn't be staring at a site guessing what it's for. All right. When you like go on a website, it should be clear right off the bat that it is about this organization, a nonprofit organization, or a, uh, a, a restaurant, or a whatever. So whatever the purpose of the site is, that should be obvious as within, you know, virtually instantly when you view the site. Uh, someone also mentioned clarity of content, or, or we also mentioned the clarity of content. Um, what are some other ways that the, the content should be clear? Organization. Organization. Uh, I would say that what goes along with that is that the sections of the page should be easily identifiable. All right, it should be clear for example, what the navigation is. All right. Um, as was stated, you shouldn't have to hunt around to guess where content is going to be. So you should know uh, the navigation should be clear, both in terms of clear what is the navigation and clear what the, what the links mean. 
All right. Um, a website, you're not going to offer training sessions for how to use your website, or you're not going to have a manual to do it. So all of this needs to be intuitive from the word go. When you land on the site, it should be clear what you're going to do. And therefore, the design of the site should be such that the user can just intuitively pick up the different sections of the site and what they mean and use that to get to the content uh, that they want to. Um, So all these are good things. This can be done a couple different ways, making it clear. And these things go hand in hand. For example, use of a color scheme can make it more clear what the organization of your site is. For example, if your uh, navigation section has a certain look, if you style it a certain way with certain colors, that will make it obvious to people that this is your navigation. Uh, uh, section of it. So that will help with the clarity of it if you use an effective good color scheme to do that. Um, so we do use colors to make our site look nice, but we also use our colors to help visually organize the page so that people can easily spot the sections and that the content can become a lot clearer. So it's not just about picking a set of colors that look good together. That certainly is a factor. No organization wants an ugly website. But the color scheme and some of the other things that we do um, are for attaining that clarity of the material, of the content of the, web, of the website. The other thing that's useful for this as far as organization and clarity and all that is the use of white space. In other words, don't have everything crammed together. All right, Have some space between stuff so that it's easy for people to digest and they're not just looking at solid blocks of text upon text. All right? um, using headings to organize your page. All right? So there's all these different ways that we can do and their purpose is to attain that clarity uh, of the content uh, of the site. Anyone else have some characteristics? Yes? Kind of what everybody else is using, like the mm -hmm. Okay, that, that's, a, that's, a good, uh, that's a real good point. Um, let me see if I can find a site where, where that is. Yeah, exactly. Um, I thought this had it. It does not. Oh, I'm trying to, uh, is anyone aware of a site that has Facebook those? What was that? Facebook might have it. Okay, we're not logged on. And I'm not going to log on. You don't need to know that much about me. <laughs> not that there's anything to know, but... Uh, Yeah, I'll, I'll have to draw it then. I'm sure you've probably all seen it. It is where you have a page that looks like this, and maybe there's the banner saying, you know, Zellers Incorporated or whatever in the content. And you have like a thing with like three, whoa, three lines like this on the top of the page. And that is a menu. If you click on it, it comes up, up a menu. And again, that's sort of a carryover. And, and we'll have a topic about this, about making your website work in both a mobile and a uh, desktop environment. That's sort of a, a what do I want to say? That, that's sort of a case where mobile web design has sort of influenced all web design. That that's a popular thing to do now. Because, and as, was, as the student said, and it makes, has made a great point, people are used to seeing that. People know what that means. Um, very famous um, web uh, usability expert, Jacob Nielsen, said that Nielsen's law is that people spend more time on other people's sites than they do on your site. All right? And what does he mean by that? 
He means by that that in addition to what you put on your site, people are used to visiting other sites that have certain sort of conventions and rules. And you're better off if, for the most part, you follow those conventions. All right? Why is that? Well, because people already know what that means. Right? You know, like, for example, you know, if you think of, of printing a book, right? Uh, a book, the table of contents is at the beginning, and the index is at the end, all right? You probably never even thought of that, but like every book is like that, like if you think of a textbook or a nonfiction book. Table of contents at the beginning, um, index at the end. Could you do it the other way around? Could you put the index at the beginning and the table of contents at the end? Sure, you could do that, but you confuse people, right? You'd confuse people when they'd open it up and say, well, let's see what chapters are in this book and they open it up and they don't see the table of contents at the beginning. You could probably stick them in the middle somewhere if you wanted to, right? But people are used to seeing things a certain way. And therefore, when you give them things that are not that way, it can be confusing, all right? Um, there are places to be creative in web design. But I would suggest there are also places, uh, in many cases, to sort of go with the conventions that have been developed for web pages. Not as a way to limit your creativity. You can still come up with a really creative book, right? But again, follow the convention of the table of contents at the beginning and the index at the end. So what are some of the conventions that exist on web pages? Well, we had the one example of the menu like this. Other examples. There's a banner on the top of the page that clearly identifies. Again, getting back to the point that a student made earlier about having clarity. Generally speaking, there is a footer at the bottom of the page. Some of the conventions, and these are conventions of websites, but they're also just sort of human nature kind of conventions, is that the bigger the print, the more important it is. Right? So if you have a newspaper article or a newspaper sitting in front of you and one has headlines so big and the other has headlines twice as big, your eye immediately goes to the bigger one. So the size of the text and the size of the heading um, is an indication of the importance. That's the convention. So follow that convention. All right? um, a lot of times there will be a search like position right here on a website. Is that the only place that a search could be? No, you could put a search anywhere on your page. But that's where people are used to seeing it. All right. Therefore, it probably would be a good idea if you're going to have a search on your site to have it in that position. Because that will um, uh, not be confusing. People are used to seeing it that way. So. Sort of the message of all of this is conventions. It's a good idea. A well-designed website will probably, for the most part, follow the conventions of what people, what are typically found on websites. I'll give you another example. You want to drive someone crazy, put text on your page that's blue and underlined that is not a link. All right? Right? Let me see. There used to be a site that did that. Let's see if I. No, they, they revised their site. Good. I have the projector off, so I don't incriminate them. But yeah, they used to have a, th this one site that I went to, and I visited it a several times, had a block of text, had, had a piece of text that was blue and underlined that wasn't a link. I would sit there and click on that link that I thought was a link, and I did that every time I visited that page, all right? And then after clicking on it three or four times, it would be like, oh, that's right, on this page that's not a link, all right? And it would drive me crazy. So again, follow conventions. Other aspects of a well-designed web page or website.
Yes. Okay. Um, you said have, have, have a good image or images. Um, I'm going to rephrase that just a little bit. I'm going to rephrase that to say a well-designed website takes advantage of the multimedia aspect of web. So, think of this as, you know, when, you, when you're creating a website, you're telling some kind of story, all right? You're trying to tell a story um, to the people that are visiting your site. Now, your story might be trying to teach someone something on an educational site, for example. Or your story might be to convince someone of something on a, for example, on a campaign site for uh, uh, an election. Or your uh, story might be to help someone buy something. You know, if you're a shoe, uh, a shoe place and you're selling shoes on the internet, your, your job might be to sell someone a pair of shoes. And that's the story that you want to tell them, why they should buy these shoes. All right? So think of it as that you're telling a story. And when you tell a story, um, there are good ways to tell a story that go beyond text. You know, would you buy a pair of shoes that didn't have a photo of them? Probably not, right? You could describe the shoes, what they look like, but without a photo, you probably wouldn't do that, you know? If you are going to, um, if, if you're talking about something musical, you know, a site that, you know, if, you, if you're trying to teach someone about classical music and what the instruments sound like, for example, you know, a picture might be good because that might help the person associate with like, oh, so that's what a tuba is. I've heard that before, maybe. So maybe an image would be good, but a sound clip would be very useful, right? You know, if you say, well, what does a flute sound like? Well, you know, it kind of sounds like birds, but not really. Uh, and, you know, you could, the words really just aren't adequate there, right? Um, so you take the topic and you figure out the best way to tell the story and to express what you're trying to get across. And images, good images, can go a long way in doing that. All right? They are, um, you know, attractive to the eye. They break up a, a page that would otherwise be just plain text. All right? So they help with the clarity of the presentation and the visual appeal. But it's also a, an effective way to communicate information. As the old saying goes, a picture's worth a thousand words. All right? Now, um, so proper use of media, multimedia, would be something that, that I would sug suggest would, would constitute a well-designed website. Um, anything else? Pardon me? Animation. What about it? Would it be good to add animation to a site? Exactly. Animation I would consider to be part of the multimedia umbrella. So for certain things, absolutely. It makes sense. It can add some visual appeal. It can add that. In other cases, um, it can really uh, be maybe visually appealing, but not really add to the story. So you, you want to be, and again, that's, that's true for any of these. You know. um, your job as a designer is to figure out the best way to tell the story and the best way to communicate things and so on. Um, and uh, animation, animation, for one thing, can make it clear that something is happening. Like if you're downloading uh, a file, it can tell you, hey, something's happening, so you see the screen not just sitting there looking at you. So, or animation can help explain a process. So there are effective uses of it, but 
I've also, and I think we probably all have seen many websites that use animation in a way that doesn't necessarily add to it. So I'm not suggesting to use or not use any of these multimedia elements, but to um, judiciously pick among them when you are creating your site to decide what's best to express what it is that you want to express. Yes? A useful website. Wow. Well, what is a useful website? Yes. Ah. Okay. Okay. Um, excellent way to put it. Make sure that it achieves its purpose. If it is, the student said if it's a website about toys, that it makes it easy for people to find toys on the site. All right? So it matches the purpose of the site. Um, and this is a good way to start segueing over to discussing our project. Um, because I think we all have an idea, and, and you have a lab assignment where you're, where you're going to assemble some good pages and bad pages and, and, and talk a little bit about good design so you can maybe fill in some of the gaps that we have in here. But an important thing to consider is all these visual things are good to the degree that they help us achieve our goals. All right? They help us get out of the site what we wanted to out of the site. And in that way, it's very difficult to come up with any hard and fast rules because so many sites have so many different purposes. You know, um, if I were to go to a website uh, for the the kids' TV channel Nickelodeon or the Disney Channel, all right, I might expect animations, I might expect video clips, I might expect uh, bright colors and all these things to sort of add a sense of fun to the site because the purpose of those sites is to the visitors to have fun on those sites. If you compare that, for example, to say the Wall Street Journal where the purpose isn't to have fun, well, you might not have the animations on that. Or if you have video clips, there are different sorts of video clips and the color scheme is likely to be much more subdued. It's probably just going to be black and white just like the newspaper was and so on. So a lot of the visual things depend on the content and depend on the purpose because those visual aspects help serve the purpose. All right. I'm going to phrase this in just a slightly different way and talk about goals. I guess purpose and goals are pretty much the same thing. There are goals both for whoever creates the site And by whoever creates the site, I'm not talking about necessarily the web developer that's creating the site, but the organization that the site is created for. All right? So, you know, if, you know, if we're talking about Lorraine Community College's website, then the creator isn't like the web developer that creates the site. It's the organization. It's Lorraine Community College. So there's goals both for the creator of the website and the users of the website. Let's think of a college. Let's think of Lorain County Community College or, or other colleges. What are the goals of the college in creating their website? Pardon me? All right. To get enrollment. So, you know, colleges want you to come to, to their college as opposed to some other college, right? So, is the website is a recruiting tool to attract people to uh, want to enroll in their colleges. Pardon me? I'm sorry. And, okay. Um, a goal also for Lorraine Community College would be to help assist employees in performing their function. 
for example, uh, all of our expense reports are on, on the website. So if you have an expense report, you go to the website and you find out and, and you fill it out and so on and so forth. All right. So um, assist employees in doing their function is, is a goal of them creating the website. All right. Yes? Provide sponsors information? Sure. Okay. Provide partners information. Excellent. So, for example, if we were going to do a collaboration with some other organization and we were discussing it and, and or that organization was looking for a college to partner with, maybe, um, they would contact, uh, or they, one of the first things that they would do would probably be look at our website and figure out, you know, would it be a good match, maybe who the people to talk to are, and so on and so forth. All right. Um, another goal, I would say, of the people creating a site is to also help service the students. In other words, if you can do certain things online, you're not coming here and standing in line for six hours waiting for someone to help you. If you can handle it yourself uh, uh, online, then that's freeing up sometimes of some of our employees, that they don't have to spend time assisting you if you can answer the question yourself. And it's going to be a better experience for you, right? If, if for example, to, to register for a class, if you could do that online, you could do that at home, right? As opposed to having to come here in person, all right, and, and registering. What are some of the goals of the users of this site? What do you as students use the website for? All right. Um, Picking classes. All right. Check account. Pardon me. Interact with staff. Access grades and assignments. We could come up with a whole bunch of these things, right? Because especially uh, a college and an organization such as this, um, the site's going to be big, right? There's going to be a lot of different goals for people. Um, the point is, though, is that in deciding whether a website is good or not, whether a website is well designed, really, you need to look through it through the lens of the goals, both of the whoever created the site and also of the user goals. Are those goals being met? For example, you know, and again, this is where it depends on the particular site that you're after, all right? Uh, If someone were to say, I was on Lorain County Community College's website yesterday, and boy, was that fun, all right? I did this, and I did that, and I did that. But it didn't help me figure out you know, what classes to take next semester. Or I couldn't find the name of the professor that I needed to, to get my prerequisite waived, or this, or that. Then it probably isn't a good site, all right? Because the purpose of the site is to meet the goals of the people, all right? And therefore, you have to judge a site within that context. You're not going to judge the Wall Street Journal site design-wise from the same perspective that you're going to uh, uh, judge the Nickelodeon website, because they're made with two different goals. Now, there's something else that I think it's important to recognize. And when we start talking specifically about our project next week, um, We'll notice that really, there isn't just a user of a website or one group of users to the website. There are multiple users of the website. And I don't just mean multiple individuals, I mean there's multiple groups of users. 
What are some of the different kinds of people that you would call users of Lorain Community College or potential users of Lorain County Community College's website? What are some different groups? All right, high school students considering what they're going to do next year. Parents of high school students coming here next year. Will they have the same goals or will they have different goals? Yeah, they might have some goals the same, but they're also going to have some goals that are different. All right. What's another group of people that, that could be visiting LC's website? Older adults that want to come back to school. So non-traditional students that want to come back to school. All right. Um, are they going to have the same goals as the other two groups of people? Not necessarily, right. They may have some goals in common. Again, they may have some goals in common, but they're probably going to have some distinct, unique goals that maybe a high school student wouldn't have. All right. Um, what's another group of people that might visit? Um, employers, possibly. All right. Uh, Again, would they have the same goals? Well, maybe some goals in common, maybe some goals different. All right. So one of the first things, and when we pick up next, uh, next week in looking at our project, we're going to talk about goals, and we're going to talk about groups of users that are going to be visiting your site. Because the first thing to do before you develop a site is to determine what your goals are for the organization that's creating the site, who are the users that are going to be visiting your site and what their goals are, all right? Because if you don't do that, then you can't truly decide and you can't truly develop a website that is good. Because remember, a website is good is if it achieves the goals of the users and if it helps achieve the goals of the organization. It doesn't really have anything to do with the way it looks. The way it looks might help achieve those goals, but we, want to put, we don't want to put the cart before the horse, right? We want to make sure that the goals are what, uh, the goals are what, are tr what is truly important, all right? If those are achieved, then it's a good website. And how can we achieve those goals if we don't recognize what those goals are? How can we recognize what those goals are if we don't consider who the people that are going to be visiting our site are? So that's the first step in developing the project is doing that. And we'll talk about that more formally next time. If you have not already, read the, read the description of the, the project, and we'll pick up on that uh, first thing Monday. All right. Sorry again for showing up late. We'll see you in lab.